So in this video pre presentation, we're going to continue our discussion with regards to cardinal utility theory. Now, what we're going to look at now is how the cardinal utility theory um, states how consumers can maximize their utility. Now, ultimately, when we speak about maximizing utility, what we are referring to is consumers seeking to get the best out of the goods and services that they consume from a point of view of satisfaction. Remember the fact is that for every good that we consume, for instance, we purchase clothing, we purchase food, you know, we purchase a vehicle, we purchase a house, we don't want to be dissatisfied when we purchase these goods. We want to get the maximum satisfaction. Let's think about services. You go to a hotel, you go for a vacation, you go on a trip. These are services that you are consuming. When you go on a vacation, you don't want to be unhappy. So the fact is that every consumer that purchases goods or services, they do so in order to be satisfied. And nobody wants to be barely satisfied. Nobody wants to be fairly satisfied. Everybody would, would desire to get the maximum satisfaction from the goods and services that they consume. Because ultimately, to acquire goods and services, it requires the resources that we have, which we know are scarce. So, again, we, we in economics would desire to see how consumers go about maximizing, therefore, their satisfaction, that process. Now, according to the cardinal utility theory, it's a two-tiered approach, meaning there are two um, factors within the, the criteria that needs to be achieved if utility is to be maximized under this particular approach. Okay? So according to the cardinal utility theory, a consumer must, in order to maximize their utility, they must spend all of their allocated income for consumption. And ultimately, the marginal utility per dollar of each of the two goods being consumed are equivalent. Now let's give this some perspective. The reality is when we get paid, we don't spend all of our money. We save some. But what we're looking at here is the fact that we would have budgeted a certain amount of money for consumption. So what the, utility, what is, what the cardinal utility theory is saying is that whatever you have budgeted for consumption of goods and services, your goal is that you're going to spend all of the money under that budget. Okay? So from that, that, is, that is how you can um, rationalize the statement that all income must be, must be spent. Okay? That's one. And two, marginal utility per dollar after having spent all of your income, right, between these two goods must be equivalent. Now, what is marginal utility per dollar? You see, the fact is that no two goods, is, not every good in society has the same price. I mean, every good has a different level of price attached to it and a different level of satisfaction. And therefore, to compare satisfaction between two goods that may be differently priced, you have to bring them to the same level, which is simply mean, meaning is that we're looking at your satisfaction of a good based upon the price of the good, and therefore we call it marginal utility per dollar. So let's look at these two, at, at two goods. But before we do so, let's introduce the question that we're going to calculate. Barry, our consumer here, has allocated $1,000 of his income for shopping. And the question we're going to answer is how many units of clothing and shoes must Barry purchase, that is consume, in order to maximize his satisfaction as a consumer. And when we say maximize satisfaction, we're speaking about consumer equilibrium. What would it take for Barry to be equilibrium, to be happy, to be, to be in, 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 in that point of, you know, equilibrium? So... We're looking at this issue of explaining marginal utility per dollar. Here we have two commodities. In my country, we consume ice cream and our, one of our local brands is Flavorite. And then we have an imported brand here in Trinidad and Tobago, which is known as haagen -Dazs. Now, haagen is a, has a higher price to Flavorite. haagen is approximately $80 for this particular carton. And for the carton on the right, which is Flavorite, the price is $40. Now, a lot of people prefer, um, well, at least a lot of people that I know prefer the Hagendaz over the Flavorite. 
and they say it's a higher quality it's a premium ice cream and they prefer it to that and they say that the satisfaction that they derive is much higher than when they consume flavor right so we realize here that the mu for the haagen -Dazs is 400 the margin utility for the haagen -Dazs is 400 so we can simply say when you consume an entire carton of haagen -Dazs, the utility that you get per carton is 400 and for the flavor right when you consume an entire carton of this flavor right ice cream at a price of $40 the utility you get is 200 now look at the price of the haagen -Dazs and look at the price of the flavor right despite the haagen -Dazs having a high utility of 400 it also has a higher price than the flavor right so 400 versus 200 in terms of utility $80 in price versus $40. When you compare it now, and you simply say, let's compare utility per price, per dollar, and you put your numerator as marginal utility and your denominator as price, for Hagen Dazs is going to be 400 divided by 80, which gives you a value of 5. For the flavor, right, it's going to be 200 as your numerator divided by price, 40, which gives you a value of 5. You, you therefore realize that. Either customers, customers who purchase the haagen and customers who purchase the flavor right, they are actually deriving the same measure of satisfaction per dollar. So what we can assume is that because this price is higher, you know, better quality um, raw materials were utilized to produce this ice cream, ice cream, hence a higher quality. This may be perceived as having a lower quality, but the price reflects the lower quality. So ultimately, the consumers of haagen and the consumers of flavored ice cream would receive the same measure of satisfaction per dollar. And that is why it's important for us to, to, to utilize this particular calculation, MU over P, where we bring all commodities to the same measure of comparison. So let's bring up our table. So again, we're looking at clothing and we're looking at shoes. Clothing is $50. Shoes is $100. We were trying to figure out how much clothing and shoes that Barry must purchase in order to be in equilibrium. And remember, his income is 1000 So according to the cardinal utility theory, Barry must spend all of his income. And after having spent all of his income, the marginal utility per dollar bit of both clothing and shoes must be equivalent. So what we're simply saying is that at the end of the day, the MU over P for clothing and the MU over P for shoes must be equivalent like we see here for haagen and flavor right so remember we, we, we learned how to calculate our marginal utility and our total utility so we have a filled out table here and the only column we have remaining is the me over p column which needs to be filled out this is honestly this is honestly sorry the easiest column to fill out all you simply need to do is for each cell you divide the marginal utility by the price of the product so it's going to be 120 divided by 50 190 divided by 50 250 divided by 50 respectively and you will get the values here so we have 2.4 3.8 and so forth different values for m over p and we do, the, we do the same thing here for shoes it's going to be 260 divided by 100 380 divided by 100 and so forth you're going to have 2.6 3.8 4.2 5.4 and so forth. So we have our MU over P column filled out for both products. So the two important columns for us here um, with regards to calculating how many units of clothing and shoes is required for Barry to be in equilibrium, we have to look at our MU over P column for both commodities to figure out which quantities consumed have matching MU over P's for both products. We realize that with the highlighted rules. So we realize that when you consume two units of clothing, you get an ME over P of 3.8. When you consume two units of shoes, you get an ME over P of 3.8. When you consume five units of clothing, you get an ME over P of 6.8. And then you have, when you consume seven units of shoes, you get an ME over P of 6.8. Remember, this is the column that we are focusing on because ultimately we want the ME over P's to be equivalent. So we have different combinations that yield equivalent M over P's. How will we know which one the consumer would consume? Would he have two units of clothing and two units of shoes? Would he choose five units of clothing and seven units of shoes? 
Would you choose 14 units of clothing and 14 units of shoes? Would you choose the 10 units of clothing and 10 units of shoes? Or 3 units of clothing and 10 units of shoes? What would he choose? Well, ultimately, we know Barry has $1,000. We know he cannot spend more than $1,000 because that's beyond his limit. And we know he will not spend less than $1,000 because he would not be spending all of his income according to the cardinal utility theory. That ultimately means whichever one of these combinations, all right, these highlighted combinations, add up to $1,000, the respective units that are consumed will be the units that give him equilibrium. So we simply, on this table here, we, we highlighted the combinations. So two units of clothing, two units of shoes. That's this particular row here. We have three units of clothing and 10 units of shoes. Three units of clothing and 10 units of shoes. That's this particular row and so forth. So this table here highlights all of the highlighted rows. We realize ultimately that there's one particular combination that gives us $1,000 spent. And that is eight units of clothing at a price of $50 and then six units of shoes at a price of 100. So eight by five, eight by 50, sorry, gives us $400. Six by 100 gives us 600. 600 plus 400 gives us $1,000 spent. And therefore, Barry would be in, in equilibrium or he would have maximized his utility between clothing and shoes when he purchased eight units of clothing and six units of shoes. Thank you.